good morning good afternoon good evening from wherever you are welcome once again to our today's devotion let us pray precious redeemer eternal father in heaven we surrender our lives to you this day we thank you for preserving your breath in our nostril and by your mercies and loving kindness god enabling us to venture into this study as we delve in it, Lord, may your Holy Spirit abide with us, lead us into all truths to convict us of sin, righteousness, and equally judgment, that, Lord, we may surrender our all to you before this Lord for salvation. For this we humbly pray in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Welcome one, welcome all to Baruch Servant. We are soul winning through aggressive, effective evangelism is our main agenda. Today we are looking at today's assignment, today's assignment and the leading Bible verse is John chapter 17 and verse 24. The Bible says that Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. This is what inspiration tells us. Christ was infinite in wisdom, and yet he thought best to accept of Judas, although he knew what were his imperfections of character. John was not perfect. Peter denied his Lord, and yet it was of men like this that the early Christian church was organized. Jesus accepted them that they might learn of him what constitutes a perfect Christian character. The business of every Christian is to study the character of Christ. The lessons which Jesus gave his disciples did not always harmonize with their reasonings. The Redeemer of the world ever sought to carry the mind from the earthly to the heavenly. Christ constantly taught the disciples and his sacred lessons had a molding influence upon their characters. Judas alone did not respond to divine enlightenment. To all appearances, he was righteous, and yet he cultivated his tendency to accuse and condemn others. Judas was selfish, covetous, and a thief, yet he was numbered with the disciples. He was defective in character, and he failed to practice the words of Christ. He braced his soul to resist the influence of the truth. And while he practiced criticizing and condemning others, he neglected his own soul and cherished and strengthened his natural evil traits of character until he became so hardened that he could sell his Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Oh. Let us encourage our souls to look to Jesus. Tell everyone how dangerous it is to neglect the soul's eternal healthfulness by looking upon the deceased soul of others, by talking upon the uncomeliness of character found in those who profess the name of Christ. The soul does not become more and more like Christ by beholding evil, but like the evil which it beholds. Terrible. Let us remember that our great high priest is pleading before the mercy seat in behalf of his ransomed people. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. The blood of Jesus is pleading with power and efficacy for those who are backslidden, for those who are rebellious, for those who sin against great light and love. He will not forget his church in the world of temptation. The Review and Herald, August 15, 1893. Remember today's assignment. Today's assignment. This caught my attention. That the soul does not become more and more like Christ by beholding evil, but like the evil which it beholds. Oh my. As we come to terms with our assignment today, let us remember that our great high priest is pleading before the mercy seat in behalf of his ransomed people. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. No one is excluded. He makes intercessions day and night for us. Remember the devil accuses us before God daily, but for Christ, he makes intercession that you and I may be forgiven, that you and I may be made whole before him. 
The blood of Jesus is pleading with the power and efficacy for those who are backslidden. Even the backslidden are not forgotten because Christ is ever pleading for their cause that they may be redeemed. For those who are rebellious, he's also pleading. He's also pleading for those who, who sin against great light and even the love that he showed us by dying on the cross on our account. Christ is saying that he will not in any wise forget his church in the world of temptation. Behold, he says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear. God does not enjoy when humanity that he made and formed in his own likeness and image suffering. It is upon us to accept Christ, embrace him and walk according to his bidding because his biddings are always his enablings. Let's pray. Master divine in heaven, thank you our God and our Savior for loving us this much and by your grace enabling us to study from your word, to understand the assignment that you have given us today. Oh God, before it is too late for salvation, help us walk according to the injunctions. For this we humbly pray in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you, dear listener and fellow viewer. May he preserve his breath in your nostril. Till we meet again for tomorrow's devotion.